All right. So today we've got the story of Zacchaeus the tax collector. This is a uh, sweet little story about some guy who uh, tries to get a, uh, a better look at Jesus. Then Jesus invites himself over for dinner. And then Zacchaeus realizes what he needs to do to become a better person. So this reading is on my list of gospel readings that are apparently easy to understand on the surface, but in reality, they're pretty tricky to fully and totally grasp. So here's what I've got for you to think about today. It's an idea that definitely is there in the reading, but it's kind of under the surface a bit. Zacchaeus has an experience with Jesus, and that prompts him to choose to become a better person. And after all, he had some pretty glaring faults, so he was able to start that process right away. I mean, he was cheating people as a tax collector, so that's a pretty good first step in terms of self-improvement. Anyway, a friend of mine told me something a few months ago, and that came back into my memory uh, when I was reading this gospel. And my friend said, we're hearing more and more these days that role models are people who accept themselves for who they are, as opposed to role models being people who strive to better themselves. And that is not a positive trend. Now, don't get me wrong. There is virtue in accepting yourself for who you are. Totally. There are plenty of things about you that would be, it would be wrong for you to try to change because they're part of what make you you. But it is so easy to hide behind acceptance as a cover for laziness and things in your life that you know are wrong. I mean, can you picture the eye rolls Zacchaeus would get if he tried to defend his, himself like that? Like, hey, I'm a tax collector, so what if I skim something off the top for myself? I have a really hard job, you don't even know. Don't judge me for my lifestyle, but accept me for who I am. Come on, all of you know how any reasonable person would react to that. Um, Zacchaeus, you're robbing the vulnerable and the helpless. That's not okay. No one should be accepting of that. That's why the goal of, of striving for excellence is a better way to structure your life. And to be fair, there are some people who take it too far. You know, they obsess about being the best they can be. You know, we have to say that out loud at least once. There are extremists on both sides. But for all intents and purposes, striving to better yourself is a better overall goal than merely accepting yourself for who you are because people who strive for excellence do so as themselves. And by that I mean an appropriate amount of acceptance is automatically part of the effort to strive for excellence. It's a package deal. So, you know, think of it like this. It's a lot like that exciting, special time right after you begin a new romantic relationship. Okay. So you've you met each other, you like each other, you're with each other, but he or she doesn't really know who you are yet because that takes time. So on the one hand, there are parts of you that they just need to accept. You know, if you're going to pretend that you're someone completely different, well, then you're just lying to them. You're leading them on. That person needs to accept things about you that are kind of, you know, non-negotiable factors for what make you you. I'm like, sorry, you can't stand romantic comedies. You don't work well on first shift. You work nights and weekends. And maybe you come to church on Sunday 
because this means something to you. Those examples and many more besides, that is who you are, that's how it's got to be. If you're with someone that can't accept things like that about you, well, that relationship is not very likely to last very long because they don't accept the parts of you that make you you in the first place. So I say it again, acceptance is definitely a good thing. But you know that that kind of thinking does not apply to the many things in your life that you could be working on. Maybe you uh, leave the bathroom a big old mess after you get ready for your day in the morning. Well, maybe now you can work on that now that you've got somebody else that'll see your bathroom from time to time. Or maybe you use bad language more often than you'd like to and it offends and bothers this other person in your life. Wouldn't that be a great motivation to clean up your language, you know, for their sake and for the sake of your relationship with them? Or what about this? What if you start dating someone who goes to church more often than you do and would like you to strengthen your relationship with Christ? So in those ways and more, those are opportunities to strive for excellence and better yourself as opposed to merely accepting who you happen to be on that day. We tend to make those sorts of efforts not purely for ourselves. We do that. We make the effort to better ourselves for the people we care about. Our loved ones have an effect on us like that, and I believe that's what happened to Zacchaeus. He met Jesus for the first time, and this divine love swelled within him because he was in the presence of real, literal, divine love, and that is what encouraged him and inspired him to turn away from his sin and do better in life. So I want you to imagine that dynamic between yourself and God. There are parts of you that you should not change because they are a part of who you really are. And God accepts you for who you really are. That's a promise. But don't fool yourself. We are all sinners. We all hurt each other from time to time. We all sin. We all make bad decisions from time to time. We all have our temptations. We all have situations where our willpower is weaker than usual. But when we strive to better ourselves every day, like Zacchaeus did, that is what keeps us on the road to salvation. And that's what helps us to become the very best possible version of ourselves that we can be, because ultimately, we are all nothing less than men and women made in the image of God.